we are live. Welcome to the first conversation in the Elevate Coaching Conversation Series sponsored by yours truly, the Love Big Coach. My name is Rosella Ide White, and I am a coach, an entrepreneur, and ultimately a healer who is seeking to nurture more life-giving and justice-seeking love in this world so that all can thrive. I honestly believe that love is the answer. As naive or as silly as it might sound, I believe that love has the power to create, to liberate, and ultimately to heal us. This month for Women's History Month, I am so excited because I'm doing something new for me, right? I am actually engaging my platform in a different way. I'm shifting gears from being the public theologian and pastoral and ministry leader and speaker to actually being who I've been my entire life, but specifically the last six years, which is a coach. And in true Rosella fashion, I am inviting dearly beloveds along for the ride because I believe that there is so much to share and to learn and to connect with. So this month, Elevate Coaching is a conversation series that is inviting us to not only think about what coaching is, because I've recognized that a lot of people have both questions and there's some ignorance about coaching, um, what it is and what it is not, but also to um, invite you to consider new possibilities, to create new uh, new realities through the power of coaching. So every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, this Women's History Month, the month of March, I am going to be inviting a friend, a colleague, a mentor, one of my own coaches to engage in conversation with me about coaching, about the coaching that they do, about their views around coaching, why they became a coach, and ultimately how they believe that the power of coaching can transform your life because we have seen it transform our lives. So Today, I'm excited to share with you my first guest, Camila Thomas, who is a friend of mine who is based here in Houston, Texas, um, and who's going to share more about who she is, what she does, and how she does it. So I'm excited to be in conversation with you today, Camila. Thank you so much for having me. So I'm going to ask everyone kind of the same set of questions. So who are you and what is your practice and or niche as you think about coaching? Absolutely. So again, Rosella, thank you so, so much for having me um, as a guest here today. I am Camila Thomas. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I am an entrepreneur. I'm also the CEO and clinical director of KBT Counseling and Consulting here in Houston, Texas. Um, that is one of the businesses that I own. Um, we are a mental health group practice that specializes on destigmatizing mental health, particularly um, in communities of color. Um, the other business that I have is the Boss of Wellness Coaching. Um, and on that platform, I coach therapists on how to build or scale a six-figure private practice by helping remove their personal and professional barriers to success. Oh, I love it. So I want you all to notice two things, right? Camila is both a licensed clinical social worker, licensed psychotherapist, and has a mental health practice. So if you are in Texas, if you are seeking mental health support and seeking therapy, please, please, please connect with her. And we're going to drop a bunch of links and, and share her information as well. But the other thing that she's talking about, right, is that she's also a coach. So I love that we're starting this series together because I think that there's often the question of the difference between therapy and coaching. So from your vantage point, how would you articulate that difference? Um, really, really great question and, and one that's pretty common. Um, both can be very beneficial and sometimes people decide which is going to be best for me. And I think the short answer to that is that both can be beneficial um, sometimes at the same time or at different points of your life, depending on what's going on and what your needs are. Um, so if we have to talk about the, some of the similarities is that both coaching and therapy can provide a safe, unbiased, non-judgmental, and supportive safe space for you to really be able to feel seen and heard on whatever your issues or challenges are. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a way that therapists and coaches go about it that make it different. So I'll start with um, what, what therapy looks like. So I've been in the field for 16 years now, um, a licensed clinical social worker. So with therapy, um, we're really trained on a medical model. We're considered healthcare professionals. Mm -hmm. And so we are treating mental health illnesses or conditions um, that typically require us to have to diagnose someone, come up with a treatment plan, and then work with them, um, you know, to, to get better on whatever that presenting issue is. 
Therapy a lot of times has a tendency to focus more on the past and the present, where coaching can be a lot more future oriented, but both can help you get really clear on what your goals for improvement are um, and what some of those um, barriers to, to wellness or success look like for you. Um, therapists are also, um, we're licensed clinicians. Um, we all have advanced degrees, so a minimum of a master's degree. Um, and we are held to an ethics board and um, policies and procedures based on the states or states um, that we are licensed in. Whereas coaching is a very unregulated field, meaning there's still no um, educational requirements, there's no degree requirements. Now, therapists can choose to become certified, which I think helps with credibility and really understanding the process of working with people, but it's not required. Um, also, with coaching, there is no diagnosing at all. Um, and so if a therapist um, identifies that a client may be struggling with some mental health challenges, it is their responsibility to then refer them out to a licensed mental health professional um, and not try to, to treat those things. Um, Therapy also focuses a lot more on the problem and why, mm -hmm. kind of the origins, where coaching is a little bit more, this is kind of where we are and how can we more, be more action-oriented. Um, therapy is also more reflective, and the therapist plays a little bit more of a passive role to allow the client to, you know, work through their challenges and kind of figure things out, where coaching is a lot more directive. Um, so in my coaching sessions, typically after every session, my client is walking away with a very clear action plan on things yeah. that they should be working on um, until the next time we meet. Yeah, no, I love this because you're highlighting some key things, and also you're highlighting my own I'll just call it bouginess about professional, um, this professional work. So on the one hand, like I love the reality or the the truth of the fact that therapy, there is that diagnosing component, right? So mm -hmm. if you were working with a coach, we are not, and I say this as a coach myself, we are not trained to diagnose mental health conditions. Um, and the other thing that I would say is that, like you said, to highlight for therapists, everyone has an advanced degree. I would say that for these conversation series, the women that I am <laughs> interviewing and lifting up are all women that are either um, certified or have a degree in their field as therapy and or certified as coaches, because that's important, right? Mm -hmm. For us, it's important to have some type of ethical accountability. So many of the women that I'll be talking to throughout this series, if they are not certified under coaching, they're certified under another module or medium, but then there are those that are coaches that are certified either through their coaching certification program or and or through the International Coaching Federation, which is one of the bodies that um, has international recognition and creates, to Camila's point, that space for coaches to be, for coaching to be more regulated. Because at the end of the day, I believe that regardless of the helping modality you engage in, I do kind of cling to the medical kind of mantra of first do no harm. Right. So that requires us to be mindful in what it is, the, the tools that we're using to be trained in particular modalities and to ultimately support the flourishing of our clients. Um, I always tell my clients that I'm a little dangerous because I started my career with training to become a licensed mental health professional. So I say, I'm very clear about saying when something comes up in a coaching session, this is actually a therapeutic issue that I really want you to take back to your therapist, because I believe that you need both. I want people to have both a therapist and a coach, um, because again, you're talking about past, present and future, and it's a beautiful marriage. So yes. you shared a little bit about your niche, you know, working with therapists who are looking to build their practice. I'm curious about why you took up coaching, right? As you were doing therapy and you were not only seeing individual clients supervising new therapists, but also having a practice where you were the clinical director training and supporting those who were working as, as practicing therapists. Why did you take up coaching as a part of your, your endeavors? So um, therapy... It's a medical model, right? And so we have to, in particular for me, because my practice does accept insurance. Um, I'm, I am billing insurance based on medical necessity. And as people heal, right, which is was just part of their treatment, um, then they get better. But it, people still need ongoing support and resources. Um, and so I was finding myself um, having challenges with people who had, did, had done really well in therapy, 
um, but they were no longer meeting the criteria for depression and anxiety, right? But they were still finding value in um, our therapeutic um, relationship. And so what happens to, to those clients who have kind of graduated therapy, um, so that was one one aspect in regards to coaching for therapists. I really just started paying attention to um, and accepting the gifts um, that I have in the in ways that people saw value in me. And so I just start having therapists reach out to me to ask me how I was able to scale my um, business in a short amount of time, what tips I learned, how I could support them. And so I said, you know what, people keep reaching out to me. Why don't, you know, I actually establish a business to be able to support them um, in a real way. Mm -hmm. um, and so I have been coaching therapists individually, one on one for the last year, and I absolutely love it. I love this. And the thing that I, for me, because I've been in therapy a long time, I've had coaches a long time, right? The thing that I do love, though, about coaching is that it tends to be, for me, more of a co-created relationship, right? So I'm coming to a coach because I want to get somewhere that I'm not, or I'm wanting to continue to take steps forward and I'm confused about maybe where to begin. And if you're working with a good coach, right, a coach is going to help you identify what those goals are and then how those forward steps, what those forward steps are and support you as you're moving along the way. Um, and it's not just about accountability. So I'm curious in your, your own experience, as you think about the coaching that you've also received and that you want to provide um, and this is, I'm going a little bit off script, so bear with me, <laughs> but it made me think about this. As you think about the coaching you want to provide, right? How do you know that a client is ready to engage the work of forward movement? I'm just curious. And even in your own life, and you think about coaching, how did you know that you're ready to, okay, I'm ready to actually do this forward motion work? Does that make sense? So before I even start working with a client, I have a coaching strategy call. And that is our opportunity to really understand the why, um, the expectations, what the needs, what the challenges are, but also the strengths, right? What are the strengths? What are the things in regards to entrepreneurship, empowerment that you are already coming with? Um, and also to ask them, are there any barriers, right? That things that may be going on that may prevent you from showing up and really taking advantage and being present in this co coaching process? Because it is very different, right? Coaching, there's an expectation, there's a bigger investment, right? In regards to time, energy, um, finances. And so it takes a different level of change in action um, because we'll, we'll engage in a conversation, um, they'll have action items and then the expectation is that they kind of come back and those things have been done, particularly if there is, if it's a more structured coaching program when they have a very um, specific end goal, right? Mm -hmm. So at the end of our 90 days, six months working together, you want to have actually launched um, your, your private practice or you want to have scale to have hired two or three people, right? In order to help my clients get that goal, then there are some things that that need to happen. So I do a coaching strategy call with anyone before we start working together to really assess those things. Um, I also give a questionnaire um, afterwards um, before our first session to get really, really clear on what stage of business um, they're in. Um, have they started at all? Or maybe they've launched but having some challenges. Um, get really clear on what their goals are, what they feel like their role is in this process. Um, and, and get really, really clear on what their, their outcomes are. And we just, we talk about those things, um, because every, every coach brings something different. And so I think it's really about a right fit. Um, and every client isn't your client. Um, and I think it's, it's okay if you have to refer out or maybe say like, I'm not sure you're ready or what have you, but fortunately I haven't had to have those conversations <laughs> by the time, by the time they reach out, by the time they have, you know, both with some of the previous clients and like, Camila, I'm get you together, right? They, yes. they kind of are, they kind of already know. Well, and I love that. Like Camila going to get you together, right? That is, uh, I think one of your gifts, one of your skills, right? You're a truth teller. You are honest and, but you're honest in a way that really does respect the personhood of someone. Um, and you hold people accountable, right? Like if this is what you say you're going to do, then what does doing this look like? And by when will you do it? And then how can we support? And one of the things I often tell clients is sometimes life happens or there's something that's operating in our belief system and our value system that is actually an obstacle 
for us moving forward. So I always say, if we have something that's on your, I call it my onboarding, right? But your, your goals for our time together and you can't, or there's something that is keeping you from doing it. Then for me, that's a reflection that there's some mindset work that we need to do um, because it's not just about the action of doing it. There's something that we call it limiting belief, right? That is keeping you from moving forward in that way. So I feel like coaching can be a great, again, like you said, safe container for folks mm-hmm. to uncover those beliefs, to create new ones, and then to engage practices that get them to where they want to be. And that kind of connects to the next question If like, when you think about what's possible, right? When, if everybody had a coach, what, what would be possible for folks? I think just a better world, mm. just a better world in general. Um, I think we, the human experience, moving through this thing called life can be heavy. Um, We just deal with some very unfortunate things. So I think with coaching and therapy, we would just have a a better world in general. Um, But specifically for coaching, one of the things that I love is to really um, empower empower my clients. Um, Most of the time, the things that they're looking for is either information and knowledge, which are things that just can be taught. Um, or really the skill development and the enhancement, right? Mm -hmm. They've gotten to this point because they already have some really great um, traits inside of them. And so it's just kind of helping pull those things out, provide them with the information and knowledge that they just didn't know. Um, And really also sometimes help shift them from being more productive than just busy, right? Um, Sometimes we are all over the place trying to do all of the things. And so we can get frustrated, we can get worn out. And so really kind of helping people get very clear and creating an easier and more seamless path to get to where it is that they want to be, where it is that they want to be. Um, and I think in all of that, generally, it can decrease people's stress, de- decrease um, confusion, anxiety, um, frustration, the desire to give up, because you have someone who hopefully right, has already been where it is that you're trying to go. And so you don't have to figure these things out by yourself. Um, and so those are the things that I love and I want my clients to, to walk away with. Like, you can do this, right? I'm just yes. going to keep giving you some seeds. I'm just going to help walk with you on this journey, but you, you got this. And I love how you said like your role, you understand is to be empowering. And I think that this is something also with coaching, or at least the coaches that I, I'm in relationship and community with, right? We don't believe that people are broken or that people are coming to us because they're lacking, Mm -hmm. right? We believe that the gifts are there. And I often use the analogy of like an archeologist, like you have this beautiful site that's been buried. And I think part of the role of the coach is to help excavate what's already there and Mm -hmm. to help people remember, right? Who they are and what's possible. And if they don't know what's possible, right? This is why we talk about considering possibilities because coaching really does invite you to consider what could be. And then I think that it's always helpful having a, another person, right? A, a non-judgmental and unbiased person that is able to look at what you're presenting and also to ask questions of, is this an alignment with who you say you want to be mm-hmm. right? or what it is you say you want out of your life? And so, and I, I love how you said the world will just be a better place. Um, and, you know, when we think about coaching, we think about, at least for me, I always go back to sports, right? That's how, when we first think about a coach, right? You think about the person who is guiding, nurturing, encouraging, training a team. Mm -hmm. I grew up as a a cheerleader here in Texas. And so I've been coached literally since the time I was 11 years old, 12 years old. Um, And I learned a lot about good coaching. I learned a lot about unhelpful coaching, but I also learned that it doesn't matter how good you get, you are always, or you can always use coaching. Mm-hmm. Right. So think about people like the LeBrons or the Brittany Griners or the Serena, like all of these greats who arguably are the best in what they do, um, have a coach. Mm-hmm. And so then I always invite people to consider. So what does that mean for us? Right. For people who might very well and are great beings. But what does it mean for us that when you are pursuing not just excellence, but alignment and the ongoing development of your skills and gifts, you get outside support to help you do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anything else coming up for you? Yes, 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 yes. So 
Um, this month, I have two um, master classes that I will be bringing back. So the first will be next Tuesday, March the 7th at 6 p.m. Central Standard um, Time. So this is going to be my free master class on how to build a six-figure private practice. So this is going to be all of the foundational um, tools that we need in regards to identifying the business structure that will best protect yourself and your personal assets, mm -hmm. professional liability insurances that we need to have, the credentialing process, and also the HIPAA compliant um, systems that we need to have in place. We'll also talk about business banking as well. Um, so again, that is going to be next Tuesday, March the 7th at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And and then on March the 17th at 12 p.m., that is going to be my masterclass on how to identify your niche. Um, this is so very important, whether you are in coaching or you're trying to be a therapist, because just because we can serve and help everybody does not mean that we should. Um, and it, there are definitely benefits that can help you personally and also in regards to your business when we can niche down, right? So we're able to increase our revenue and our profit. We are able to develop very targeted marketing strategies to speak directly to the people that we're really wanting to work with. And in turn, we typically feel better because we're working with clients that we're aligned with and we can position ourselves to be experts in whatever that area is to have better um, client outcomes. So I invite my therapists who, you know, maybe you're new, maybe you have been kind of seeing everybody or maybe you're just not really seeing the flow of clients that you want to. Um, people may be unsure of who it is that you're serving. And so in an attempt to serve everybody, we can end up serving no one. So um, again, that is going to be March the 17th at 12 p.m. Um, for people who want to be connected with me, I am on Instagram and Facebook. Um, for the counseling practice, you all can go to kbtcounseling.com. Um, that will also be the Instagram and Facebook name. And for people interested in coaching services, they can go to my personal website, uh, <laughs> camilathomas.com. That's K-A-M-I-L-A-H, thomas.com, um, to see the different coaching services and packages that I have available. I love this. I love this so much. And I love specifically what you talked about niching, because as someone who is a creative that wants to do all the things. And I've now been in business for seven years. I have recognized the power, right? And clearly identifying and articulating the target populations that we want to work with. And so even if my population might seem broad to others, I am a coach who coaches historically marginalized populations. So specifically women, BIPOC folks and queer folks. And from that's from the individual work, but then from the organizational work, it's the same thing. I coach nonprofits led and or founded by women, BIPOC folks and queer leaders. So even having that clarity, right, that came to me through coaching, like through being coached and being um, in some respects pushed it, pushed, some respects pushed to get really clear about what I want to do. So Y'all, if you are a therapist seeking coaching, wanting to build a practice, I commend very much to you, Camila, because she's someone who's done it, right? And at the end of the day, not that every coach has to done the thing that you want them to, that you want to do, but I think that any coach that you find needs to have um, found, embraced, and be living in their purpose, right? There needs to be alignment. So when you think about coaches and who you want to work with, and I'm going to be sharing tons more coaches with you, right? The reality is, is that you want to find someone who is embodying showing up in the world in a way that you want to show up in the world as. So yeah. So Camila, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to post all of your contact information. Um, and if you are watching, please join us again. It will be Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays in March at 12 noon, we'll be going live here, 12 Central's time. We'll be going live on Facebook, but we'll also be uploading the videos over on YouTube and sharing snippets of the conversations on Instagram. So I am Rosella Ide White, your love big coach seeking to nurture.